Oh, they put me in such a high, I can't remember. <laughs> Thank you. We are immersed in another event. Good. Uh, what a beautiful day. We're blessed to be here, and we're going to open our awareness to this month's. Uh, can you hear me? No. Turn on your mic. Yeah, that's because I didn't turn it on. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, it's my cell phone. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> anyway, I told Spirit this morning, I said, listen, Spirit, I'm giving the talk. What does that mean to you up there in heaven? It means that we have a standing room only crowd. But that means that all the seats are filled. Well, thank you, Spirit. We've got a good crew today. Thank you for being here. Anyway, anyway, my dear friend Joanne referred to it as the Cosmos Consciousness. Today we're going to refer to it also as the Christ Consciousness. And uh, I need to give a special recognition uh, just to thank uh, an author. And this is his, uh, his name is uh, Michael Singer, and the book is, uh, did you know the book? I'm, I'm Tattered Soul or something. Yeah, I'm Tattered Soul! Because that was the inspiration I got today for the title of this talk and for some of the content. So we need to give them some credit. You know, I dissolvized all of it, so I don't hope he doesn't get excited and upset because that's not what I really said. Anyway. This particular theme, though, will put all of us in the right state of mind when we do what? When we put it into action in our lives. That's what this month's about. How do we put this in action? Most of us, uh, you wonder, what is this mean? Christ consciousness. We label everything. But today we're going to give another explanation. Bob did an awesome job last week. Do you agree? Yeah. Um, I don't for anyway, uh, what Singer said was that every one of us uh, faces things in our life, and he calls it billions of things that we don't really expect, that we never thought about, that affects what we're doing. But what this, uh, this theme does for us, it puts us in the right frame of mind to deal with those billions of things that possibly could happen in our lives. And that's what this is about. When we came to this planet, uh, we didn't come equipped with a, a how to do an instructional manual. So, so, so many things do happen and some of them are so devastating that we put a label on them as being devastated. Uh, and I'm not going to go through a list of all the natural and man-made disasters that confront us far too often, nor am I going to talk too much about uh, the individual on a smaller scale as situations and circumstances that affect each one of us because we face them every day. The point is that, and. Uh, we say that things happen, and we see bumper stickers that say S happens <laughs> in our life. We've all seen that. But, but things do happen in our life. And the, the bottom line is, here's the question we answer today and this month during the Christ Consciousness theme. Are we willing to be happy regardless of what happens? Put that in mind today. Are we willing to be happy regardless of what happens. And when I thought about that this morning as I was you know, contemplating putting all these thoughts together, and we know what recently happened in Connecticut, I thought, how can I do this, Angela? How are you going to do this without breaking down? Well, it's, it can be done. Because basically, we can't be happy for a specific disaster, can we? We're not happy for that. But what we can do, and what I had to do, was transcend what's happening in the world of form. We need to transcend that. And we need to come to the realization that on a different uh, scale of things, in a spiritual scale of things, that everything that happens has an unseen, unseen purpose or spiritual growth that we do not understand. And that's what we need to do when we see these things happening. We can say, you know, in spite of whatever's happening, that there's an unseen something that's causing this to happen, that we don't understand, but we know that it's a dimension of spiritual growth in some way. Do you accept with this? Can we, can we live with that? So, and then somebody may say, you know, Angelo, you know, uh, okay, what are you talking about, Angelo? How can I be happy when I'm in constant pain? I get up out of my chair and I'm, I'm struggling, and I'm physically, I'm, uh, how can I be happy? How can I be happy when I lost my job and I'm, 
I'm going to be out in the street next week because I can't pay my bills. How can I possibly be happy? <clears throat> oh. What's the answer to all that? Mm -hmm. The idea is we need to take a look at what this nature of our creative process is as we talk about this idea of being happy. Because today's talk is about that. We're, uh, what the theme is, uh, Christ conscious, but aligned with that is unconditional happiness. That's what the Christ conscious is all about. Unconditional happiness. No matter what happens in the world of form, I'm going to rise above it. And so what this means is that when we are feeling sorry for ourselves, and that I'm there too, you get older and it takes a while to get going again, you know, get the old But the bottom line is this. The nature of this creative process is that whatever I feel and whatever I speak goes out into the universe and comes back tenfold. So if I want to be miserable about what happened, or if I want to be miserable about my station in life, then all I'm telling in the universe, and it always says yes to us, doesn't it? God never says no, it says yes. It's very impersonal. Even if it's harmful to us, it says yes. And so when I experience it in my misery, more misery. I get more opportunity to be miserable. So this is a no-brainer. So when we, when we are in that mode of, of victim consciousness, we need to realize that I need to be happy regardless of what's happening. On the reverse side then, using those same similes, I can be happy because I've got a loving family, a loving spiritual family that's there to pray for me. I can go on the internet and say, throw some prayers my way, I need some help. I can be happy that I had a parent that gave a lot to get me on this unit, on this planet, and I can be happy that I have the air to breathe. I see our dear, dearly beloved Marie Lane, for goodness sakes, the last time I talked to her. She's happy when she can take that breath. So we have a lot to be happy for. So the bottom line is that we are here as eternal spiritual beings to do what? To enjoy the own, whole enchilada of human life. We're here. We can't pick and choose. We're here to experience, experience it all. And we're here as eternal beings. And what this means is that we're here to learn and we're here to grow and we're here to have fun. We are here to have fun. Let's say yes on that. Yes. 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 Fun. Yes. Oh, that's not over there. <laughs> so today we're going to look at Today we're going to look at this idea of the Christ conscious and put it down to where we understand what does that all mean. And what it means is that we combine that with something that we need to be doing anyway. We're here to enjoy, to have fun. So we put together with that unconditional happiness. Spirit, uh, spiritual teacher Joe Goldsmith, I love Joe Goldsmith, and what he said was this uh, during his lifetime. He said when you finally analyze and define what consciousness really is. The realization comes to us that consciousness is who I am. That's consciousness. It's not mysterious. Look in the mirror. That's who consciousness is. It's who I am. Then we tag on to it. We love to do this and do that. We tag on to it, that, the crystal. And uh, we tag on to it, the word Christ. We tag on the word Christ. And all that means is the anointed one. That and when you realize that consciousness is who and what I am, and we tag on the word Christ, conscious says that I am the I am. Wow. I am the image and likeness of God. And I am the kingdom, the power. And I'm one with it. The kingdom and the power and the glory. That's who I am. And so when I'm confronted with these billions of things that I'm not aware of, I need to keep that in mind. That's who I am. Do you accept that? Yes. yes. <laughs> Say yes. 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 <laughs> and to maintain that is not easy. But to maintain it, what's so important about it, because we do a lot of counseling in this business, to maintain that who I am consciousness when these people, there's so many people struggling with this human relationship, and they, they're not aware of that they're supposed to be doing that. <laughs> that we're here to do the struggle, and we get something spiritual out of it. But what happens is this, that when we, if we don't use the who I am, and the situation occurs, we close down. 
I know you've got friends and relatives who are so immersed in this painful experience. They're so closed that they're not open. And what happens, I think, and I'm not a, a doctor, but I can tell you, Dan's back there. You'll correct me after. <laughs> Hi, Dan. <laughs> but anyway, we close down. We close down, I think, the heart chakra. We close it down to where it's not allowed to express itself with that loving energy that's always there. And so what we do when we bring in the who I am and something bad happens, what do we do? We neutralize the, the energy that it brings forth, this negative experience. And what we do, we say, bye-bye. It leaves us. It, we detach from it. And then what it does, it opens us up. It opens up our heart chakra so that we can explore, experience the glory and the love of the universe itself. And that's what it's all about. Uh, there's a, a guy who's a, a great leader, a great speaker, and spiritual teacher. His name is Romana Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi. And what he used to say was this, if you want to maintain inner freedom, there's something you've got to do continuously and, and seriously. And that's to keep asking the question, who am I? It's kind of interesting to ask that question, who am I? And uh, basically, who am I? Who sees what I see? Who hears? when I hear, who knows that I'm aware? Who's that person? Our own individual answer to that question, who am I, will actually define how we're going to experience the given moment. I really believe that. And so we, we can look at this and say, OK, I'm involved in this situation, and I'm allowing it to immerse into my life. I don't need to do that. I just need to realize that I don't need to do that. And we'll say, well, okay, who am I really then? Who am I really? Every one of us, every day, defines who we are. And sometimes very subtly. And we, what happens to all of us, and I'm one of those, I'm part of all of us, what happens to us is that we, we are so engrossed, we blend in so much with what we're doing. We're so busy, we're so active in this life experience. I'm too busy to do this, or I'm too busy to do that. Or I, I actually, and the, the sad reality of it is, we become that. We identify with our job, with our pains, with, our, with all the things, and with the suffering. And that's the unfortunate thing. And so we need to ask ourselves, and today I did. I asked myself, Angelo, just in the last few days, what are some of the things? Did you ever say, I am tired? How many of you here, just in the last few days, said, I am tired? Oh, yeah. Anyone? I'm, I did, many times. <laughs> yeah. I am lonely. I hear that a lot. I am lonely at Christmas. Because Christmas is a lonely time. I'm in pain. I've got pains. I've got a body that's getting older. I'm tired. And then we have to come to the realization that if we are really embodying that idea of the Christ consciousness, the I am can never be sick. How can God be sick? Think about it. The I am can never be lonely. My gosh, the I am is everything. With all the goings on in this universe, how can that possibly be a lonely experience? You see, it seems kind of obnoxious, doesn't it? But it boils down to we are in charge of our consciousness. We are the consciousness. And therefore, we need to monitor and exactly know how we're communicating with the universe itself. And so when Angelo says, I have a headache, I don't have a headache. My body is experiencing a headache, but the I am that I am can never have a headache. When we transcend that idea, this connection, that we seem to want to have with the physical, then we transcend what's happening, and then we open up the heart chakra to something special, to the healing itself. So, you know, I am not my stuff. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not this job, I'm not PLC, and I'm not Emerson. And I am not Stella's husband. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'm not. Oh, well. <laughs> 